The NBA All-Star Weekend has concluded. Patrick and I are going to give our thoughts and uh, ways we think we can fix it. Because NBA All-Star is officially broken. Also, the Nets fired Jacques Vaughn. Let's get into foul trouble. The Nets fired Jacques Vaughn like one hour ago. Yeah. What is going on? Why now? I don't know. I I guess, um, you know, Sean Marks was just bored. I, I guess. But it's like, how is this going to fix it? This is the second year in a row that they fired their coach before the end of the season. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I don't feel like Jacques Vaughn was really doing much for the Nets. And we kind of talked about this in our like last podcast that the Nets are kind of like a little further away from that 10 seed than it's probably plausible to get it. That was one of my uh, bold predictions. Two and a half that, games back right now. Yeah. That was one of my bold predictions that they make it a race. Um, obviously, they just lost back to back games to the Celtics heading into the All Star break. So it's going to be tough for the Nets. And I think there was some weird things with the Nets. Like, Cam Thomas's minutes kind of seems like it's been this like small storyline for them. It's like he's starting, he's off the bench. But I feel like that's kind of been the story of Cam ever since he even joined the Nets to begin with, with like Steve Nash too. And that's what happens when you have such a high usage guard who doesn't pass much. It's kind of hard to fit them into the jigsaw of your team. But I don't know, man. I don't, I don't feel like this is a this is going to move the Nets up or down either way that much. Yeah, no, abs- I think you're totally right. It's just like I don't know. I don't know. A weird time to dump firing your coach a day after the All-Star break or a All-Star game. And now the Nets just seem even more like floating in the middle rudderless than than we had thought before. They still don't really have any like marquee prospects. I think Mikhail Bridges, like both of us had expected, has fallen into like Mikhail is awesome. He is not a star player. He is a super role player. And they've got this bevy of picks. I think it's a little overstated how valuable those picks are. Like, there's definitely a chance down the road that you get like a good Suns pick or out of the whole uh, batch. But um, I think most of those picks are going to be 20s in the 20s in the first round picks and i don't know i guess i guess you're feeling good if you're a nets fan i i i don't know how how they might be feeling yeah i mean i think they're just gonna reload with a new coach this offseason and i feel like if you would ask either of us you know a week ago like do you think jock Vaughn will be the nets coach next year i probably would have said no yeah, yeah, I guess probably, probably no. I guess why, why'd you even hire him to begin with? To begin with, if it's if a lost he, year for the Nets, they're trying to figure out what they want to do. Yeah, it's a little like floated out there. I feel like this was the assessment year where they're like, okay, Mikel kind of looked like he could be a lot more. Let's see what that looks like a whole season. And now they're kind of seeing like, okay, like we do, we just are, we are just a team that's chock full of high level role players, like. Now that we now and their star Ben Simmons and their star Ben Simmons, who you know maybe he'll get some more run now. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I feel like the Nets are still going to be like the eleventh or tenth team. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. They could maybe get to the ten, but probably not. I don't know. Trey Young seems really locked in. He was in literally every All Star event. Um, okay, the Nets have been miserable to watch for most of the season, but not as miserable. As All Star Weekend, James, the um, people want to know <laughs> what what did you think? Okay. Uh, where do you want to start? Well, let's 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 start with the events in chronological order. Okay, we've got the celebrity game. The celebrity game I thought was fun. What did you think of the LED court? Not a fan. I what? think the NBA is just doing too much with the courts, man. They're just doing too much with the courts. I, I like obviously I don't think you could play like a full game on the LED court, but like with the rules changing, I loved them moving around the three point line in the fourth quarter. Every time they went up and down the the court, the three point line moved, which was insane. And I thought it's a celebrity game. Why not? I kind of like that. I did think the the court looked really cool for the um, like dunk contest and three point contest because you weren't shooting like down onto it. You could kind <laughs> of like see the guys with the court, and I think the more close up angles made it look cool. But yeah, definitely, I don't think it's a feasible thing to play a real game on it. But I I was for it. I was for it. Yeah. I mean, how, I guess with the celebrity game, 
you know, some years are good close games. Some years are not. Like last year's Liberty game was a close, tight game. This year's was not. Uh, this year's Michael Parsons took like a million shots. I don't know. I, I feel like we need to stop having NFL, WNBA, and other pro athletes being in the celebrity game. I think that needs to stop. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on board with that. I want to see like actors and comedians and musicians and, and, musicians and politicians like well, trying to. I move. will say with politicians, because you remember there was like that three year stretch where it's like the Secretary of Education, Arnie Duncan, is back. And it's like, dude, no he one was knows a who the Secretary of Education is. Like, why are we. Yeah, not a real celebrity. Not a real celebrity. <laughs> yeah, like, what is he doing out there? Which I guess the NBA has once again proved that they don't care if you're a real celebrity. You just need to have a title like a real celebrity. Because yeah, they did not they did not have very many big people. No, this was not as star studded as last year's cast. Um I wonder if that I wonder if someone has gone through like the celebrity game rosters and seen how they like ebb and flow with the city selection. Yeah, yeah, I did think that. It it is a lot harder of a pitch to be like, all right, come out. You're gonna play a basketball game in Indianapolis at five West Coast time, and it's gonna be on a Thursday. Are you down? Are you out there? Um, who is like your dream? If you could choose one celebrity to put to guarantee to be in next year's celebrity all star game, who would you choose? I feel like, you know how they had, like, Sabrina versus Steph? Mm -hmm. Can we get J. Cole versus Drake? Oh, that would be... Like a okay. Dreamville versus OVO celebrity game? Like, I feel like, why don't they do something like that? That could be a lot of fun. Yeah, that could be fun. Because especially like those are two idea. guys everyone knows they hoop a lot. I A one-on-one -on -one celeb... People have talked about a one-on-one -on -one tournament with the NBA players. But, but a one-on-one celebrity. -on -one celebrity tournament would be awesome. I think that could go really far. I mean, I think... They got to put me in it next year. Yeah, of <laughs> course. You got to put our guy Jidel in um, there. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like the NBA has done a good job of getting a lot of these S-tier celebrities before they hit that tier. Like, I feel like they got Justin Bieber, like, right before he hit, like, mega, mega stardom. And they yeah, got Drake, yeah. like, right before he hit mega, mega stardom. But I think, like, doing some sort of a headlining, like, I don't know, like, that might be a little bit better than, like, last year when they did, like, Dwayne Wade versus Giannis because it's, like, a... Huh? Yeah, Random. I liked. I, I thought the coaching choices were were perfect this year. Like there were some funny moments of Stephen A. and Shannon just talking. Of course, everyone's mic'd up. That's one takeaway I have from like the whole weekend is if the the like basketball content isn't great, which it hasn't been in years. Why is everyone not mic'd up? Yeah. You know, <laughs> I want to. If you have these like celebrities out there. And they're not really playing great basketball. Please, just like at least let us listen to them talking to each other the whole time. Yeah. All right. The next thing on the docket is the Rising Stars, which wasn't terrible. So the way they do it, they divide, you know, the four guys up into or the four teams up into these like mini teams that are in a small tournament. And then there's the one G League team. Um, I didn't watch the draft. I don't know if the draft was televised for this, but Team Pow no. was oddly stacked it kind of seemed like Powell had the first like eight picks in the draft yeah i'm pretty sure it was determined beforehand and i don't know if the other guys just don't really watch the nba anymore but yeah it was super stacked um but i will say i had this feeling in my gut because it showed the roster and it's like victor women yama jaime hawkins pajemski i'm like wow they've got like brandon miller too i'm like wow they have pretty much everyone who's a rookie of the year favorite except for chet and I was like, why do I feel like they're not going to try and that G League team is going to try their absolute hardest and win? And that's exactly, exactly what happened. Victor Wimanyama, I don't know what he was doing for most of that game. was like goofing around. It didn't really seem like he was giving his best effort. Really set the tone for the weekend, right yeah. there, Victor. The other first round game of the Rising Stars was pretty good. There was a little bit too much like chucking for like a real competent basketball game. But overall, it was like competitive. Both teams seemed like they wanted to win. Yeah, we were exchanging texts about um, how uh, Scoot can only play effective, good basketball when he's playing people that are younger than him. Um, so yeah, shout out to Scoot. He nice to see some awesome. signs of life for right. Scoot Henderson right there. We need to make active players the coaches. Like that, yeah. No yeah, more yeah. like Detlef Shrimp, who like <laughs> that name means nothing to a sixteen-year-old kid watching the NBA right now. We need like. Like, we need, like, 
Giannis always seems down to do this. Like, let's get Giannis. Let's get, you know, yes. three other guys. And let's have Get them Draymond out there. And, Come yeah, on. Yeah, get Draymond. And let's have them draft right before it starts. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It just seems like the NBA is so apprehensive to do a live draft. And I, I don't really understand why. Like, if a guy's in his feelings, like... I'm Go sorry to be cry to your twelve million dollar contract. Yeah, like, that. But also, it's like good content. You're an entertainment company. Maybe just entertain. Sit with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I think that one honestly needs the fewest amount of tweaks. I don't. How do you feel about the G League thing? I'm because I heard cool the NBA is reassessing the Ignite's existence because NIL has kind of made it so there's no real reason to join the Ignite. And this year, the Ignite team was pretty weak compared to past years. So. I don't know. It was kind of weird, though, because like we're going to get scooped for three years in the Rising Stars game now because of this, like putting G Leaguers in it. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm pro G League Ignite from an NBA standpoint. I think there's a lot of value in being able to like control the development of players. And at the end of the day, when they're in the NCAA system or if they're in Europe, like Obviously, we've had so many cases of really positive development in both of those places, but you don't have the control. And so I, I think it's a cool platform to put players on. Um, and like it varies. Like it, if we had some higher prospects, it it gives a little bit more and just more high profile. I mean, obviously, like Ron Holland is a guy that. Mm -hmm. was at one point the kind of guy that was earmarked to be the number one pick in the draft. Not so much anymore, but like that level of prospect normally will get people interested. And I mean, the NBA wants people interested in the draft and whatnot. So like I'm for it. Um, and and the, the guys, the age gap isn't like huge. Of course, like I guess Jaime Hawkes is probably like seven years older than these G League Ignite guys. Do you think they should go back to rookies versus sophomores? Um, honestly, no. Because, like, <laughs> I just feel like if we do rookie versus sophomore, it's going to be the exact same thing as the All-Star game. Which, like, at least these are shorter games that, like, maybe you catch lightning in a bottle in a matchup where, like, people, they're actually trying to win. But, like, I don't know. It's just so... It sucks. Yeah. It sucks so <laughs> fucking much. Okay. Well, then let's go to the highlight for most people of All-Star Weekend, which is the Saturday night, which is the mm -hmm. skills competition, the shooting, and the dunk contest. Um, I, skills competition, I just I like it better as the individuals. I got to say, it was pretty hard to keep track of like who was winning at any given time uh, in the skills competition. I'm like, I don't know. I think the the passing portion was really compelling um, and like fun to watch them run around and, and do that. But um, I don't know, like Anthony Edwards shooting left handed in the first portion and Scotty Barnes doing the like backwards three heave, like just try and convince us you care just a well, little bit. You know what? I mean, I hate to say it, but like to skip ahead a little bit but on the all-star game broadcast they're like and team west is representing the boys and girls club and i'm like well fuck the boys and girls club apparently because these guys don't give a shit about them yeah I, I i mean it's like almost incentivized for them to like n play willy-nilly and not care and it actually probably contributes more to the boys and girls club if they don't care Maybe that's a way. Maybe, we'll, we'll talk Although about they ways care about, to well, They cared about what team the East was representing, though. Which <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is true. Um, I feel like the skills, personally, yeah, I don't think the skills challenge needs to change. I do wish it was kind of always the same one it's always been, just so we can always get the historical comparisons. We can get someone breaking a record. I think, to me, that's cooler. I, just, I think it's the NBA has this problem where it's just changing things up too much sometimes. I feel like the NBA needs to go back to being a little bit more traditional at times. Yeah, yeah, I see that. I see that. I mean, the skills challenge, my thing about the skills challenge is like, I don't know. Who who won the skills challenge last year? I, I, I have no idea. I don't know. And so it's like when we can't even answer like simple historical questions like that, does like the historical like, 
I don't know, bedrock really need to be like preserved? Yeah. Well, I guess like maybe the NBA, if they are going to change it, like they should do something that it's like, all right, we need to get Kyrie Irving for this. Mm -hmm. And we need to get like Steph and we need to get, I don't know, like Donovan Mitchell and all these crazy ball handlers. Yeah. I would almost like something like even more flashy in the skills competition. Like, like what if is like, okay, Kyrie, you got to get from one side of the court to the other and we're going to send like 25 kids at you (laughs) You and and you just gotta you gotta dodge every single one of them like that's something i'd be interested in watching where's the creativity i feel like with a skills competition so loosely defined we can get really really crazy yeah okay the next thing is the three-point shooting contest which i feel like is the one thing that doesn't need fixing yeah only thing perfect how do you feel about the starry the starry shot i mean I, th- I think it's nice that they're incorporating long range shooting into the shooting challenge because that kind of reflects where the league is at. But I also kind of, I don't know. Where is your issue with the Starry branding or just like, like well, the, one, the, the Starry extra long branding? Shots. It's just like, oh, Starry is this big partner. Now they get a four point shot. And it's like, okay. Um, but I, I mean, yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter because you don't always remember like who won last year. I know Dame won last year. Mm-hmm. But. I feel like the historical comparisons are kind of fun, and the starry shot does ruin the historical comparison stuff. It used to be the Mountain Dew shot. You know, I miss yeah. those days. I miss those <laughs> It days. used to be the Sprite Slam Dunk competition. <laughs> yeah. We're just, like, jumping from soda to soda. Yeah, I, I hear you on that. We, we I feel like we have kind of screwed the historical, historical numbers yeah. for the three-point contest. I'm kind of on the other I guess side I, with the deep threes. I wish there was full racks there. Because it's like that is a part of the game. Yeah, like it could be, it maybe it would be better if they added an entire rack in 20 more seconds or 15 more seconds. And then you just got to choose anywhere above the break that your deep rack was. That would be cool. Because then you actually incorporate deep range shooting. Because I feel like the problem with just having two single deep range shots is like you could make both of those and then really underperform everywhere else and then beat somebody. Yeah. I think that's what I don't like about it is. As much as we want to be like whoever wins is like the best shooter, it's like when you incorporate the sample size to be that small, it almost defeats the purpose of the exercise, in my opinion. Yeah. You were you there last year mm-hmm. at the three point? Do they know how many points they have when you, they're shooting? So I actually uh, got to be a test dummy for TNT the day before or two days before so I actually got to run through the sk- the three-point challenge as like an exercise from the practice like how the TV mechanics go for it and like you really don't unless you're counting in your head I thought it was crazy like I don't know if Dame was counting in his head but I felt like every single round he had to bury the last shot to move on to the next round or to win hey bro it's Dame he time he did it every single time and I was wondering like like at the end when he won he just started like Hitting the the um, Dame time, and I was like, "Do you know you won?" Well, like, bro, if, when, it's, when it's clutch time, you know Lillard's gonna come through. No, for sure, for <laughs> sure. I, I wasn't shocked that Dame won, but I'm just like, some of the guys. It seemed like they had no idea how many points they had, and then it was like Dame seemed like he was so locked in. I don't know if he was counting in his head or what, but yeah, that was a question that that came to my mind. You know how some of Cat's shots didn't count because his foot was on the line or whatever? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, did you notice how the ref just like didn't tell him that his foot was on the line and just let him keep shooting? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm just defending my guy Cat, here. But... <laughs> we, we have a, a uh, cat uh, hater. Max, I'm, I'm with you, Max. I, I feel like if the guy takes two in a row that are on the line, I feel like the ref or somebody should be let like, yo, back up. Yeah, yeah, like he was not blowing his whistle or anything, so Cat just kept shooting, and it's well, like... that's tough to because if you blow the whistle then it's like am i supposed to just stop all together i don't know it's that's a tough situation i i don't know how you would go about like informing him but i'm kind of with you that it's like damn like yeah he was just locked in trying to you know up against the timer like trying to get as many shots i mean it's as easy as like hey your foot's on the line your foot's on the line i feel like whoever ant was sitting that night it's on him (laughs) (laughs) that's true that's true that, Fair enough. Yeah, you 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 only every one of those guys has got to have at least one teammate in there. Like if if we all heard Ant piercing through the arena, like yo, cat, back up. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, I mean, they have the freaking LED court. Like, why can't it like go? It, it should start like blinking red or yeah. something when your foot is like over the line. I thought the the countdown on the court was pretty cool. That is cool. To be honest, I really liked that. But you did, did you see that, Max? Do you know what I'm talking about? Like the shot where since they were like on the court looking at the guys, uh-huh. I thought the court wasn't as distracting. As it was in like a full game, right? For the three point contest, you mean like they could add like extra like effects and stuff? Because, yeah, like yeah. they can kind of go crazy with it, and yeah. it's not like as like super distracting. Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool for like the not to skip ahead, but for the dunk competition too, where like you the know, trail. Yeah, the trail, and also like you know when Jalen Brown gets out there, they throw they make it look like a Celtics court. Yeah, I like that. I also that's kind of cool. Like I'm that. into that. I feel like you can really. Mm-hmm. I mean, we'll get into the dunk contest. Yeah. We'll get into um, Steph versus Sabrina. Awesome. I thought that was awesome. My I I have no critique with Steph versus Sabrina. Next year, I want Caitlin Clark and Sabrina to just yes. be in the three point contest. Yes. Yeah. And I don't because I know next year they're talking about maybe a Caitlin Clark Sabrina. Steph Dame 2v2 and some I don't know if it'd be the girls on one team or Sabrina and Steph versus Caitlin and Dame but personally I'd rather just see them in the actual three-point contest don't care if they use a WNBA ball I don't think anyone cares um and yeah because because Sabrina had 26 so obviously she didn't beat Steph but she would have tied Dame and she would have Mm -hmm. had a chance to have won the three-point contest which like she would have lost to Steph but if she got second in that I almost feel like that's Cooler in a way than getting second in the 1v1, even if she had an amazing score. Yeah, I think a, like a NBA, WNBA three-point contest would be really, really cool. Because like last year, like Julius Randle was in the three-point contest. Like we can put Caitlin Clark in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't think anyone has a problem with that. And if they do, I don't think they're a real basketball uh, you, fan. You wouldn't have swapped out Malik Beasley for her though, would you? <laughs> Oh, I would have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not like Malik Beasley's an amazing three point shooter. No, for sure. But like, I would rather see Caitlin Clark potentially beat Damian Lillard. Like, that would have been kind of badass. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, any chance. I, I would take a, to watch Caitlin Clark shoot threes. I, I'm taking it. She's, I think Caitlin Clark should be drafted by the Pistons. We yeah. should start making exceptions. Yeah, for like, her. I feel like in general, I'm kind they, of they can take her. She's on the board. <laughs> yeah, I feel like in general, I'm kind of anti like throwing the WNBA in our face too much during All Star Weekend because I feel like the NBA is starting to push their limits with it. But this is kind of my exception zone where I'm like, why don't we just take Sabrina and Caitlin and then two years from now, whoever the best shooter in the WNBA is, and throw them in there because I feel like it is the one facet of basketball where it is like a much more like fair. And fun way to incorporate shoot or them. shoot. Yeah. Shoot or shoot. Yeah. I thought it was super good vibe. It was cool to see like, wow, she did better than pretty much every yeah, single other shoot. guy. Yeah. Like she's just like money. Um, yeah. I'm interested to see how they grow that. Yeah. I guess I, my hope is that it's not a one year thing. I, I would like to see like her or Caitlin or both be like in next year's three point contest. Because I'd rather just see them be a part of the whole pool. Yeah. And that means we're bringing Steph into the pool again, too. Absolutely. Oh, my God. It feels weird that Steph is, like, participating, but he's not in the... Like, it's kind of weird that it's, like, Damian Lillard is this year's three-point challenge competition, and then Steph's, like, I... I scored 29. Yeah. <laughs> like, I literally beat him. <laughs> yeah, that is a pretty tough look for Dame. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? Steph's just, like, staring at him across kind of the court. I think it's funny, because I feel like... Like, if you were to go to NBA history, like, Steph's the greatest shooter ever, but you could really argue Dame is, like, two or three or four. And it's like, but we've anointed Steph to the point where it's like, Steph's actually too good to be in this challenge with you guys. Like, he's got his own challenge on the side. Well, like, it was like Larry Bird. Like, the gap between Larry Bird and the next best three-point shooter was so big. And he won, like, three or four three-point competitions. Like... I don't know. I was going to say nobody wants to see that again, but like I do want to see that. Yeah, we do want to see that. I feel like a good Steph first name when it comes to shooting is like that's timeless and we only get a couple more years of it. So let's make the most of it. I would literally watch like Steph just like go around the thing six times and it's like which run was the best for Steph? Steph first Steph. (laughs) Can can Steph make them all? 
Yeah. So, I mean, a lot. Do you guys think the three point contest should be the final event? Because I think a lot of people have been pushing for that. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah, like I guess. After the, after the dunk. game? After the dunk contest. Oh, after the dunk contest. I mean, if the dunk contest continues to be as terrible as it is, then yeah, we need the three point to be the end. Yeah. Like, so, I will say last year's dunk contest wasn't bad. No, it was well, okay. McClung, I think McClung was just so good last year. It made last year's whole contest feel good. Because I was talking to someone last night, and they were like, did you like the dunk contest? And I was like, I didn't like the dunk contest. I liked Matt McClung. But yeah. because the other three guys had no prayer of matching him, yeah. you know then what? I didn't like the contest itself. But I got to say, the two people dunking over Shaq is insane. And if I'm, if I'm Matt McClung's manager... The second you see Jacob Toppin about to jump over Shaq, you're like, hey, buddy, like, we got to do something else. Yeah. We cannot do the exact same fucking thing. Like, what? It's crazy. All right. So I have a solution that I really think could fix the dunk contest. Okay. They should turn it into horse. Dunk horse. Mm. I think the problem with the dunk contest is like... A lot of guys come out and they just have whack ass dunks. Like Jalen Brown jumping over Kai Sinat while he's sitting down was terrible. We we, not... we got to talk about Jalen Brown in a second. But but Mac McClung doing something crazy and then it being like, okay, Jaime, uh, yeah, Jaylen. you know Jalen, and you you have to do that or you're gonna get a letter. And then I think after you modify horse a little bit so that way like McClung doesn't just keep going. Maybe it's like you get you get to set the dunk twice, then the next person sets the dunk twice. And you just kind of keep going like that. I think that's a way cooler way to do it because I feel like like if you want to rewind to like six years ago, when we had like the best dunk contest ever between like Gordon and Levine. It was really cool. But the real problem with the dunk contest is this subjective scoring system. Mm -hmm. And what I really hate about the dunk contest is when you do finally have a good one and it's like we're going into overtime. You always have to give the first guy a 49 so there's room for the other guy to top him. Yeah. Why isn't the rule just you just pick who you thought had a better dunk? I hate the scoring system for dunk contest. It's so stupid. Why is it out Especially of Especially for the final round. <laughs> what? Also, why is it out of 50? Yeah. And why is the minimum <laughs> why is the minimum score 30? Is that what it is? I, there's yeah. a minimum There's a minimum score? score of 30. You can't go lower than 30. Those scorecards don't go lower than 6. James, that is such a good idea. <laughs> I have never heard a better idea to fix the dunk Cause, contest. Because then it's like, it's more objective, so it's more fair, well, which I think everybody would like. Such a big problem with the dunk contest at this point is like, you're expecting these guys to be like super creative. Mm -hmm. And like, some of them are okay at that, but like, that's not what you need to be a great dunker. You know, you just... Like, get the guys with the most athleticism out there, and then if at least w each of them can think of one good dunk, that's all we need. Yeah, because I'm just like, dude, I think it'd be way cooler, like, even going back to the Aaron Gordon, Levine one, like, Levine does, like, or Aaron Gordon does his crazy, like, catching it off the mascot under the butt dunk, and it's like, oh, shit. And then Zach Levine's like, I could do that. And that's the thing that's crazy. He's like, if he did it, it would be so freaking cool to see him match that, even though you know Levine's a great dunker. Okay. I got to take it back now. <laughs> Imagine if, so Aaron Gordon does that under the butt, sitting dunk, and then you're like, okay, mascot, you got to hang out here. We're going to have a couple more people try that. They've never done it before. I, that's a terrifying place to put that mascot in. But, I mean, you know, it's, semantics. If you're in the dunk contest, like, I don't know. I just feel like the excitement of seeing people trying to match these crazy acrobatic Mac McClung dunks is really cool. Yeah. And it, it kind of, I feel like it's, I don't know. I just like, J, like Jalen Brown, you're dunking over a guy sitting down and the guy's really short. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Okay. I mean, like, let's, let's jump into Jalen Brown. <sighs> Jalen Brown. Brown also called himself one of the best contact dunkers in NBA history. Uh, <laughs> Worst take spoiler. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> but like Jalen Brown, the one thing he was doing well is like jamming with force. But like I honestly think Jalen Brown has done irreparable damage <laughs> to the dunk contest because like he did it. He was the all star. He went in and what did he come in with? <laughs> Like nothing. nothing, nothing. He just like was imitating old dunks, 
way worse than they were done originally. I feel like Jalen Brown never watched Levine versus Gordon. Yeah, I feel- or he didn't watch Mac McClung last year, and he's probably like, "Holy shit, this dude's nice." <laughs> like, how do you jump over Kai Sinat sitting down? He's five foot three. <laughs> the other guys are dunking over Shaq standing up. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's. It's just like, why would you? I don't know. I feel like it's even less likely at this point for another All Star to do it because they saw. The worst case scenario is you just get like flame roasted online everywhere. What was the dunk where he like sneezed afterwards? That that? was supposed to be. So D Brown won a dunk contest with kind of like a like blindfolded thing when he was dunking. But D Brown did that while he was in the air and Jalen Brown looked like he like forgot to do it and then just kind of like tried to sneak it in at the end like just absurdly bad job by Jalen Brown I just I can't even <laughs> this podcast is slowly becoming very anti Jalen Brown he he had a worse <laughs> take nominee like a week ago he's I've he's been just trying just... to defend Jalen Brown recently and I just <laughs> can't I, I have to come off it yeah I feel like everyone's like we got to give Jalen Brown some credit he was an all-star who actually did the don't contest like but he sucked. Yeah, he was awful. What about the left-handed dunk? Well, we didn't know he had a left hand. <laughs> yeah. That was a big question we were asking coming into this. <laughs> but, like, even the left-handed dunk was, like, super lame. It was like a tomahawk. Yeah. Like, I mean, that would have won you, won you the dunk contest in 1979. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the problem that there's, like, three rounds. because so they have to think of three different unique dunks. Like, I... I guess, but they signed up for this. Yeah. The, the standard is really high because you're not just competing against the other two guys. You're competing against everybody on social media. Yeah. Like, because, like, right when the dunk contest ended, like, Chris Staples, one of my friends, he's, like, a professional dunker. He posted videos of him doing every McClung dunk that he had done, like, over the past two years. He's like, I've already done every one of these dunks. And I'm like, that's the thing. Like, all these guys are competing against all the people you're seeing on your Instagram reels now. So it's like, it's really tough. So I feel like that's why doing it as like a scoring each dunk is a really outweighed way of doing it. It should just be about who's the most versatile dunker. Yeah. And, and you know what? It would be cool to go back to your idea, like how disappointing that like Kai sitting down dunk was. Imagine if each one of the guys had to do it after that. Like, well, no, but McClung would have looked probably way cooler doing it because what you could do too though is you could do the horse method where if everyone matches you you get a letter in the first round that is the way that is the way because then if you come out with some weak sauce and everyone else is like uh okay like a tween i can do a tween yeah Yeah, yeah, i got that yeah also, I you just really, want, you really, you really cooked here, James. I do think that's a great idea. Yeah, like I, I, I don't know. I feel like it'd be because then, because then, even in a year like this where you have one guy who's just way better, like it would be, it does kind of add to that excitement level where it's like, oh, he's going again. Oh, I, man. I thought Toppin was really good. I got to be yeah. honest, but he just like didn't have the creativity. I just have to say what the NBA is doing to Mac McClung by letting him compete in these <laughs> dunk competitions, but not signing him to a team. Is just like so messed up to me. I'm like this poor kid. Like I genuinely feel really bad for him because like they're doing the post dunk competition interview, and she's like, "What about next year? You think you're gonna come back for a three peat?" And you can just he's just like, "Yeah, you know, uh, maybe." And I could just see him screaming inside, just saying like, "Could I maybe just play in the NBA for more than like a two week contract, please, hey, God?" That is the life support of his career right now. Well, I don't know if you guys watched the Rising Stars game because he cooked in oh, that did game. He, no, he was I, I really, didn't. really good in the Rising Stars first round playing on the G League team, bro. He absolutely dominated the Stack Pow team. There we he go. looked really. He, he looked like an NBA. He looked mo- almost more than anyone else in that G League team, like like an actual NBA player. Wow, he's good. I am he's so, good. Yeah, he's I not am that so bad. not excited for the the draft this year. 
I had a feeling McClung was going to be awesome this year, and it was going to be another like the Lakers let go of a what white guy role player who ends up being really good somewhere else. Like I just yeah. saw it coming because he was kind of good. And they, you remember the Lakers had that weird win? Was it like two years ago with McClung like leading the way? I think he scored like thirty or something. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Let him play for the Pistons. Come on. Hey, I, I, I hey like man, Mac he's better McClung. than Jaden Ivy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell me otherwise right now. You know, I'm just gonna let that. I'm just gonna let, let that, that slide. let that cook. I'm gonna let that simmer. Um, that take is gonna spoil real fast. Yeah. I don't know, man. Jaden Ivy looked like trash in that Rising Stars game. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just letting it cook. I'm just letting it simmer. Um, we will, we can revisit that on a uh, another Monday episode, maybe. We'll yeah, just, we'll see. We're we'll see. see. <laughs> I don't know. McClung Ivy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Should we get to the game? Y- yes. The quote the game the game (laughs) that the nba players attended and ran around how do you fix this the players just need to try it's it's not on the nba to keep coming up with new formats it's on the players to start giving a shit i and i just don't see why they would yeah why would why they would start now i feel like the all-star game every year is just like Adam Silver being like, it's going to be good this year. I feel it. Like, this could be the year. Fingers crossed. Let's see it. And then it's just like the guys are just like, I'm not trying to get hurt. Like, I, it's I'm just, not trying like, to. They used to try. Or they at did. least they used to listen to try in the fourth quarter. I mean, another problem is I feel like All-Star games, when they are close entering the fourth quarter, tend to be good. Mm-hmm. But them being close is completely random based off how many threes each team made. And yeah. the problem is, like, they're taking way too many threes, man. Like, wide open threes are not fun to watch. 211. You should, to almost, 186. You should almost get negative points for taking a wide open three. <laughs> if it doesn't come off a crazy cool pass, like, it shouldn't even count. I don't know. Yeah, they like, should. Just... I, I'm sick of watching wide open threes. They should, like, not announce how the scoring will be taken. <laughs> And then just like show them what the score is at the end of every quarter and they just got to figure it out. Okay. I did think of one solution. Okay. Instead of playing an all-star game, they play a best of five mini series with games to 40. Okay. And it's like the full rosters of each conference playing these. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like the Rising Stars format, but it's just because I think that like right now the problem is, and this is happening in a lot of the All Star games, is one team will shoot the lights out. Just coincidentally, they're having a better shooting day, and it leads to this massive gap entering the fourth quarter. And that's when I feel like I've never seen an NBA All Star game where if it is close, they they always try if it's close. In the end, they will. I've been, they always do try when it's close. So. The goal is make it close, and I think the best way to make it close is doing it so that it's like, okay, you dominated this first game, but everything resets, and then the other team, if they're down 0-2, can be like, all right. I guess the worry I got to call bullshit on it a little bit because we did just do the Elam ending for three years, which is like a basketball formulation to make sure that it's close at the end of every single game, and the first year, it worked really well, and then last year... It was trash again. But last year it wasn't close entering the fourth quarter, though. Yeah, because Jason but, Tatum like couldn't miss. Yeah, it's the it's the same thing that happened this year. Like this year it was Dame and Halliburton. Last year it was Tatum. Like these guys just catch fire from three and it ends the whole game. So I mean, yeah, yeah, it, you're definitely right. Like the three point shooting throws it out of whack recently because it's just like unless both teams are cooking. It's going to make a huge gap, especially when nobody's playing defense at all. Um, But like, so I wrote down a couple questions of like kind of areas that we could look into trying to fix the all-star game with. Do you think moving the all-star game to a different time in the NBA calendar could potentially be an answer? Like earlier or later? Like I was thinking something real crazy, like off season, off season. Yeah. Like literally incorporate it into summer league or something so you guys are rested they're not as worried about getting injured and i don't know um what Uh, or or maybe earlier in the season um is is this part of the year part of the problem i don't think this part this part of the year is part of the problem for the players effort but i will say i vehemently hate the specific week it is 
It's so it's, dumb. It's the week after the Super Bowl in the Valent like then it usually will it will usually absorb a Valentine's Day, which like for any older fan of the NBA is like no fun for you. Yeah, either. well, it's so easy. Like I'm a basketball diehard, but but you have it, a girlfriend. I have a girlfriend. <laughs> And it's like, oh, like I'm watching basketball for the last three months and the next three months, it's Valentine's Day weekend. You know what's super easy to skip? All-Star weekend. Like it is so easy to skip. And I don't think like I have, I'm a unique like person in this. And even if Valentine's Day is on like a Wednesday, like it was, you just, you celebrate on the weekend and you just skip All-Star weekend. Also, yeah, I, I don't know. I also don't really like that the NBA is like, okay, football's over now. Here, it's our turn. It's like, <laughs> guys. It's a little eager. Yeah, like, I, I, I think don't it know. would be better. Like, I think it should just be the following week. It should be not this weekend. It should be this next weekend. What if it was on Pro Bowl weekend? You know? <laughs> I mean, no one's watching the Pro <laughs> Bowl either. Just throw all the trash sporting <laughs> events on the same weekend. Um, yeah. Okay. Next. Is it about the stakes? Does it need higher stakes? Yes. Okay. I just, I just, I think the real problem is like these guys are almost making too much money now and it's hard to get them to care. And you're not going to be able to put up enough money that's not going to affect some other portion of like the salary cap or the collective bargaining, I feel like. So do we start, what do you guys think about having it be like a MLB all-star game kind of thing where the winning conference, we're back in the conference format, the winning conference gets home court advantage in the finals. I feel like I've been really against that idea, but after this year, I'm opening up to it. Yeah, I, I've been kind of in the same place. Like, I, I think it's interesting. I think teams would definitely try harder. Because the problem is, like, these guys just aren't trying. And I'm like, they used to try. Like, before our time. Like, yeah. in the 90s and the 80s and the early 2000s, they really did try. And now they now just they don't try. It's really it like it's it's disappointing too. like a guy like Ant, who is like one of the most super competitive guys was like, I'm only going to shoot left handed during the game. Like, yeah. bro, I, I you were one of the guys I was hoping was going to like bring it. Actually, shout out to Cat. Cat brought it. Cat yeah. did bring it. Cat, I Cat feel like is Cat made was, in a lab to play in an all star game. I got to say, I feel like Cat had a had a good uh, boost to the Cat stock weekend. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. one of the few winners from All Star Weekend. <laughs> Carl Anthony Towns, winner for All Star Weekend. Okay, so here's another idea that I had for the stakes portion of it. And I think the game would probably have to be moved either to the off season or at the end of the season. But what if they added like three more uh off days to the next season's all-star break for the winning conference. Do you think that could like oh, just entice be, them? I mean, it's not a bad idea. It's just the scheduling would be tough. Yeah, that's why I think like if you did it, like say you did it the week. I don't know. You could okay, do I that. I have a crazy idea. Okay, love it. You move the in-season tournament backward a little bit and you okay. move all-star forward a little bit and it's a event that's part of the IST. And then the teams in the IST final just don't play their guys in the All-Star game. So you'll miss out on a LeBron, Anthony Davis, I don't know, Tyrese Halliburton, which might suck for Indy, but it's like the Pro Bowl. Patrick Mahomes doesn't play in the Pro Bowl. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally love that. I, I would like to like <laughs> just get rid of the All-Star game altogether and just put the IST, maybe you make it like an actual knockout tournament Make it a little bit longer. Make it like three weeks. And they just do all that. It culminates with All-Star Weekend. Maybe you could still do a dunk contest and a three-point contest. Um, it would be w even better for the host city. Yeah. Way more uh, events. But then, I don't know, It's it gets weird with regular season games. Do you want to hear my... Okay, here's my big gripe, though, about all of our suggestions. It comes down to the players. These guys, I don't like the injury excuse because these guys are doing like big runs in the summer. Oh, yeah. Like, come on, man. Like, try. try. Like, dude, some of the layups Jokic took yesterday where I think he shot it upwards at the bottom of the rim at one point. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Come on, man. I loved how Book was literally just hunting, 
like full court touchdown passes. He had three of them in the game. You you could tell he just was out there and he was like, I got to get a couple of these bad boys in. Okay, do you want to hear my most unhinged idea? Yeah. So this I like to call the all-star tab idea. So key point to key like mechanic of this is you've got to get all of the guys out to the all-star sit city by at least Friday. I think Thursday would probably work better. But and it's got to be in like a, a big city. Like it can't be in Indianapolis. It's got to be like in New York, LA, something like that. So once each player arrives to the city, you give them a all-star credit card and the guys can just go crazy. Doesn't matter what you're spending money on. You just got to spend as much money as you can really run up that bill. And then the all-star game is for the team that pays the tab. (laughs) You've got whatever team loses they got to split the payment of the overall balloon of all, what, what is it, 30 all-stars. However much money they, they spent, they, maybe they're buying cars. Maybe they're buying just dinner, going out. Um, they're going to be spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. If, one, if there's one thing NBA players know how to do, it's spend money. And they're going to be doing it. Like like nobody's business. And who wants to pay LeBron's tab? Nobody. That is my one off-the-wall idea. I think that they could get up for that. Yeah. I mean, it'd be funny. Are they going to list out everything they bought? Because I don't know if players are going to want to disclose yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I'll leave that up to the NBA's discretion. But more fun items, yeah, I think we're going to have to see. It, maybe the NBA could produce like a little bit of a vlog around like where they're spending their money as well. But um, just at, not show all of the Magic City charges. <laughs> yeah, no, no. We keep those ones under wraps. <laughs> but like imagine. All Star Atlanta is going to be bad. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we get like a uh, squid game like uh, piggy bank up top above the uh, arena. And there's just all the cash is in there that you got to cover. That's my favorite Adam idea Silver, that I came up with. Adam Silver, hire this man, okay? Hire Adam Patrick Silver. Stewart. I, I'm just pitching, I'm pitching great ideas left and right. Maybe what we need to do is we need to have the captains sit out next year and they have to sit with the charity they're representing. And the <laughs> they have to realize how insulting it is. Yeah. When your representative of 12 NBA players go, I don't give a shit about the charity I'm representing. Like, I don't know. Like, that's kind of crazy, bro. When they pan to like, well, the Boys and Girls Club better hope the West picks it up. And the West is like, Luca is going for dunks he can't even fulfill. (laughs) You're right. I don't know, man. Like, it's kind of crazy that when they did that, I was like, we got to get a couple of kids with leukemia in the front row. And it's like, look over there. I mean, maybe there needs to be a penalty where it's like the losing charity gets defunded. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's kind of, cra- it, like, I honestly think it's kind of crazy for them to be like, and the West is representing the boys and girls club. And it's like, wow, the West doesn't give a shit. Yeah, we're going to blow up a boys and girls club <laughs> if you guys Yeah, and lose. it's, it's kind of crazy, too, because, like, I don't want to be like, I knew the East was going to win. But, like, I remember when they announced the rosters, and I was like, I think we might have talked about it on the podcast. I was like, bro, Luka and Jokic are starting for the West. Like, there's no way they're going to win. Those guys don't try. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's just no <laughs> way they're going to win when they're not going to try. Like, I know the East guys are going to try more, even though the, ta- the roster is nowhere near as talented. Also, like, at their... There's been a problem with trying in the All Star game for a long time, but like they didn't like openly laugh at like being on the court before. Yeah. Um, okay, last idea to fix the All Star game. This is on the other side of the insanity scale. I, maybe not all the way on the other side, but it's a it's a little further. What do you? I think it could get them up for the game if you say you guys call your own fouls. Yeah. Right. Um, because they're going to start taking it personally if, like, LeBron starts calling fouls well, left what, and what right. What happens, though, when Embiid gets to play again and people are fouling him every single possession? That's fine. That's fine. People are going to be start getting pissed off. That's I, what we want. I, I guess it would just be annoying, though, if, like, next time we have, like, a Shaq-type player in the NBA and they're just getting fouled every single possession, they keep calling it, and then everyone on Twitter is like, he's a bitch. <laughs> like, but it's like hey, he is getting fouled. That's discourse. That's discourse. <laughs> we keep it rolling. At least it's it's not negative dis- t- discourse towards the NBA. 
Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'd like to see that. Along those lines, I would just also say, why don't we make it like a true pickup game where it's like the first team to 21 and just make the game super short mm. so that they can play really hard for a short amount of time. Because the, the problem to me is that it's so long. The All-Star game was so long. It feels long. so long, too. And you look at the score, and it's 186 to 173, and you're just like, what? Who cares? Like, why are we watching this? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I texted in our group chat. the At halftime, the only reason I cared to watch the second half, which I bailed on halfway through, was to see if they scored 200 points. Yeah. Which is crazy, because when I was watching it, I was like, dude, if they score 200, like... I, if they're on pace to score 200, I'm probably not even going to watch the fourth quarter. I didn't watch the fourth quarter. Me I, I mean, I had it. I was watch. I was playing chess. I had it on the background. I saw Dame hit some half court. Like, man, I'm like, I'm a basketball junkie. I used to love like when I first became an NBA fan, like the All Star Game. Like it was always kind of like goofing around the first three quarters, and then it was like, all right, it's the fourth quarter. Let's all tighten up and play like an entertaining fourth. Like that's all we're asking for is a good fourth quarter. You yeah, know what, like when you talk to an old head, like somebody who's a fan of the NBA in like the 80s and 90s, and they don't, they like hate the league these days. And they're just like, these players are all entitled and they don't take it seriously anymore. And it's all just a sham. I really feel that way when I'm watching the All Star game. Yeah. yeah, you can't even say they're wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, you can't say that they're wrong at all. Like the highlight of the game was Charles Barkley talking about Indianapolis versus San Francisco. Freaking just because it was, Barkley. it was pretty funny. Yeah. Chuck is like the biggest hater on the most random things. But it's great. And yeah, yeah. I don't know. It just didn't sit right with he was he was talking some some <laughs> shit about KD and I I, I, I <laughs> He, he just like, Sounds I, like ride for us, man. Ride for us. We ride for you for no reason. And and you all you do in return is just talk shit about KD constantly. Well, no. So he's he's a retired bus driver, and he's <laughs> frustrated that no one is driving the bus when he gets on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where where were you driving the bus in uh, in Philly, huh? Huh, Chuck? You didn't really uh, pick up those car keys in uh, in Houston, did you? Or the last two years you were in Phoenix? <laughs> um. Anyways. Best take, worst take. I don't um, know, Patrick. He led you guys to a finals and won an MVP. He's done more than KD has. Yeah, that was. He also blew two, three, one leads in back to back years when Jordan was fucking retired. Like, we could have done it. We could have done it. We could have been a real city that had real things. I like how you're upset about a championship that, you if were- it had happened, would actually have no material change on your life because you would have been zero years old. <laughs> hey, those those two it's, years only bro, happened four and five it, years before I was born. Bro, it's like when the Celtics fans were like, 17 rings. I'm like, dude, you were alive for one Celtics championship. Yeah. Like, yeah. you can, like, as a Heat fan, like, talk your shit about 17. Since I, the Heat joined the NBA, it's actually three to one Miami. So, like... Okay, Celtics fans, have fun with these championships you never witnessed. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I love that. Um, okay, last thing I want to talk about for the All-Star game. Where do you guys stand? Everyone always talks about 1v1 tournament. Do you, is that something you're interested in? How do you feel about that? Uh, um, what is that doing for you? Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of not interested in a weird way. I almost feel like... You'd have to have a no bigs rule. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I feel like I I would definitely be interested to see like who's gonna win, Embiid or Steph. Like, like it would I, have to be positional, I think, right? Like it'd be like yeah. Jokic versus Embiid, or like Steph versus Dame. Because right? if it's make it take it, I don't see a world in which Joel Embiid doesn't win it. Yeah, that's true. But we don't always have a Joel Embiid in the league. Like, I guess my point, and I think Max's point, too, is, like, if you told me I'm going to get, like, Paul George versus Kawhi Leonard, like, fuck yeah. But wouldn't you be interested in seeing Kawhi Leonard versus Joel Embiid? I just don't think it'd be very competitive. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it I think it could be. Like it's just like Joel not fully getting back in transition and Paul George <laughs> jacking up like threes. Because uh, especially the way these guys play it, they don't really play with rebounds a lot. So it's like I don't know. If it's a three dribble rule, then it's like, why even have big men in it? Yeah. I don't like if you told me I'm getting like a Kyrie or Irving versus like Donovan Mitchell, like, oh my God. Yes. Yeah. Give me all of that. I mean, I just I wanna I wanna see my boys in it. Um <laughs> 
I think one reason it won't happen, other than the players just never signing up to like get embarrassed, is I feel like an event like a one v one tournament is going to be hard for the TV networks to legislate how much time needs to go toward it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Can you imagine like nobody signs up to be in it and we're watching like Davion Mitchell versus <laughs> Quentin Grimes? <laughs> that would be fun, right? Yeah. Uh, hey, I'll give you know what? I'll give props to Jalen Brown though. I bet he would sign up for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I like I would. actually mean that in like a pro Jalen Brown way. Like I bet Trey Young would sign up for that. There's there's certain guys that I feel like if they're going to the All Star game already, they're just like gonna do as much shit as they can just to get the weekend over with. Yeah. Yeah, no. I yeah, I mean it'd be fun. I would be for it. I just it just doesn't I just don't think it's gonna happen. But in the celebrity game, that's what we need. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. That would be that would be incredible. Watching Common just one v one versus Lil Wayne be great. <laughs> Before we get to best take, worst take, if you guys are listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any of the audio platforms, please give us a five-star review and let people know why you like the podcast. All right, now it's time for best take, worst take. Um, okay, best take, worst take, the part of the show where we give our best take and worst take in the world of the NBA and beyond over the course of the last seven days. James? My best take is going to none other than Sir Charles Barkley. There we go. On a broadcast this All-Star Weekend, they were at a roundtable discussion with Jalen Brown, Draymond Green, Chuck, and a few others. And Jalen was talking to Draymond, and he said, a couple years ago we made it to the finals, we weren't really able to match your guys' like energy and intensity, but this year we're going to do that. And Charles Barkley quickly quips to Draymond, but he's not going to be there. <laughs> Draymond is sitting right there. He says it to his face. And uh, yeah, Draymond was like, whoa! But really good moment. Great TV from Chuck. Great take that the Warriors won't make the finals. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, obviously, that's not a hot take. That's like a good one. It's like a pretty cold take. It's the audacity. It's the audacity to say it to Draymond's face. Yep. That that was, a, that was the best take, arguably, of the season. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was a really good take. My, my best take of the week is going to Anthony Edwards who um, said that he wants to be in a remake of High School Musical. He likes High School Musical for some reason. Is he going to be in the Zac Efron role? Troy Bolton, I like the scenes. It was pretty dope. <laughs> I would pay an infinite amount of money. I would pay an <laughs> infinite amount of money to see Anthony Edwards play Troy Bolton. Like, Not only is he just going to be in this movie as like high school guard Troy Bolton, he also has to sing the entire time. Big high school musical fan. Um, came out on my birthday when I turned like eight. Um, and uh, I would love to see Anthony Edwards in a remake. Maybe you can have uh, Zac Efron come back, play the, play the coach role. It would be great. This is a bad take. My man needs to focus on hooping. Okay. <laughs> he could not be like learn, taking vocal lessons. <laughs> Hey, he learning choreo. He's doing all the side quests right now. Um, he's got he's got a lot going yeah, on. He's already been in a movie. Yeah, 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 he was great in Hustle. He was great in that movie. Let, let's up the difficulty. Let's get dancing and singing involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, my worst take goes to Kenny Smith, who just for some reason tried to take away everything Sabrina Ionescu was doing during their Steph for Sabrina challenge, which like. It's like first complaining about the WNBA line versus the NBA line, and then she's still shot behind the NBA line, and yeah. then he's complaining about the ball. Like, I'm sorry, man. The size of the ball, like, I can't think of anything that matters less. And, like, men have bigger hands. They play with a bigger basketball. Like, I think it's so stupid. Like, do you think she didn't shoot with that ball, like, probably all growing up? And obviously she didn't need any of these special concessions she did better than literally everyone except for the greatest shooter of all time yeah i just don't get it. like why like why are you being i don't know it's just tone deaf i i think he actually thought he was like was he like insecure there? that like was he like oh my god the 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 male gender is about to take a huge l i gotta stick up for us like no i think he thought he was doing something for women there i think he thought really? he was like what yeah i i think he thought he was like oh like she did great. Like she, she really should have had like these like special concessions. Like she's a great shooter. Like 
But nobody was thinking like, oh, she's, he was acting like everyone was like thinking like, oh, this girl's trash. She didn't win. But like, I think it was completely the opposite. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. That's a, okay. That, that's how I took it. And, and it was like tone deaf, but like, yeah, super rough. Super take. weird. Yeah. Weird. Is this like the first time a WNBA player has been included in all-star weekend like event? No. no, they've been in like the ha- they used to have that half court shooting one. They'd always have them in that. Oh, okay. Shout out Chris Bosch. I think he was the greatest half court shooter for that, which I don't know if that stand the test of time anymore. But yeah, that was a weird era. It, 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 yeah. When Chris Bosch was winning the half court challenge every year. Well, because it was like there was like a legend, a current player, and, and a WNBA, WNBA player. player, and they like had to do a couple things. But yeah, that was a weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Kenny Smith's my, my worst take for just wing oddly i guess maybe an unintentional hater but a hater nonetheless yeah i don't i don't know i my worst take goes to jalen brown this week i i definitely considered the kenny smith stuff but i figured you would take that and i wanted to give us a little bit of variation he said he was asked about um the 65 game limit and he said I do believe that if you win any type of award, I think you should have to play sig- a significant amount of time, amount of the season. We've got guys who play half the season and win MVP. I'm not a big fan of that, but maybe 65 games might be a little too severe. Maybe they lessen it to 58 games or something like that, or something a little bit less. So what like, is this, the, the take going? Wait, so he... It's just not true. Like, well, it's not true, but also I'm a little confused. So you don't think I should win MVP playing half the season, but you want to lower the minimum? Yeah. Well, first of all, it just needs to be said that in like only one guy has ever won in a non-shortened season MVP and played less than 65 games. So like that's just like not happening. Like total straw man argument right there. But yeah, it's just like it's not a problem i don't know like the voters pretty much choose the guys that play the most i just hate that we're like we're constantly spinning these narratives of like oh these nba players need to be policed they need to like have someone making sure that they play games so that they and be rewarded for that like we do reward the best players when they play a good amount of games anyways and the ones that aren't playing games they're not rewarded. Like, look at any number of, like, injury-prone players. Like, what hardware do they have? I think it's funny that what you're upset about with this take is, like, the historical accuracy of it. And what I'm upset about is that he advocates for one thing and then argues the other one sentence later. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he is completely <laughs> flip flop. That's the stupidest part of this take. <laughs> it's, it, it's a three-dimensional bad take from Jalen Brown. But I think, I think uh, the worst thing that happened to Jalen Brown was spending a season with Kyrie. <laughs> oh, no. You know, he, he just needed to learn how to think, how to process information from a genius. You think Jalen's watching some weird documentaries that we don't know oh, about? Oh, 100%. God damn. Yeah, yeah, he might be. It he sucks, be. but uh, FYI, Rudy is also one of those guys that watches those weird documentaries. Mm. He just doesn't talk about it in your interviews, which I do yeah. appreciate. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> he'll he'll join all of his uh, buddies back in Utah um, <laughs> when he retires. He'll be a legend with Stockton. Yeah, he'll be a legend with, with Stockton in the, in the com- community. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I think uh, Kenny Smith probably should Yeah, I think this. Kenny Smith's the worst take of the week. Agreed. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, cool, we've cool, uh, cool. we've outed uh, Rudy Gobert as a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. We've <laughs> poo pooed Jalen Brown quite a bit over the last couple of weeks, but yeah, I hope you guys had fun listening to us just like incessantly complain about a weekend's worth of content. But you know, optimistic, and you know, Celtics fans. Every time I make fun of you, it's because you know you guys are the one seed. I'm feeling a little yeah. insecure about our chances to beat you this time around. And we've got really easy fixes. We just got to do the pig dunk contest and we've got to do the all-star tab. That's it. And then everything will be fixed. Or we turn all-star weekend into that Mayan blood sport where the losing team is executed. Yeah. That I mean, would, that would also be probably cool. be bad for the NBA, but they would try. Yeah, that's true. It would be a shame. It would be a shame to lose, <laughs> lose some good Oh players. no, we lost LeBron and Luka Dodge. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people are always saying like there's too much talent in the NBA these days. We got to thin the, we got to thin the herd. 
Um, okay, well, we should probably stop talking yeah, let's, pretty soon. Yeah, we, we, were, we were saying some dumb stuff. All right, we're going to catch you guys on Foul Trouble on Thursday. We're gonna, the NBA season is coming back around that time, so we're going to give our predictions for the second half of the season and get into some other NBA news and topics. We'll see you guys then. Peace.